B.C. B.C., 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 B.C. Unless you're talking about ancient history, that's probably meaning ballistics coefficient. And that seems to be all that anyone talks about with bullets and ammunition anymore. 20 years ago, 50 years ago, we didn't even know what B.C. was. Now it seems to be the most important thing out there. Is it really? Does B.C. matter? Well, sometimes it matters, and it matters a lot. But sometimes it doesn't matter at all. Stay tuned as we dive into what exactly ballistics coefficient is and what it can do for your hunting on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. So, what exactly is ballistics coefficient? It's a mathematical measure of a bullet's ability to resist drag, air drag. And if you think that sounds pretty inconsequential, <laughs> you probably have another thing coming. Let's just look into some traditional bullets from yesteryear compared to today's bullets, and that will help you visualize what this BC business is. So here are a couple of bullets that I would consider standard mid 20th century bullets. You know, it's a decent spire point, a flat me plat, that's the tip of the bullet called a me plat. Fairly flat, so it's going to drag a little bit in the wind. Kind of like a Mack truck versus some sort of a sleek race car or a Corvette or something. Then you compare it right next door to the same 180 grain bullet in a modern format. You've got a sharp tip, You've got a different curve to that nose to make it a little bit longer. See how it sticks up further? These are all 180 grain bullets. And you've got a boat tail in the back. And what that does is hides some of the air drag in the slipstream. So the drag is, is getting pushed aside by the point of that bullet. So it slides around it rather than a blunt point driving and bucking it. And then once the air gets past the smooth shank, it slips behind this little boat tail and you save a little bit of energy that way. So that's kind of the sleek shape. Now the other way to improve ballistics coefficient is to lengthen the bullet. And that's what we see next door right here. These are also 308 bullets, but well, this one isn't, but this one is. And a look at how long and sleek that one is, but it weighs more. Now come to think of it, this is a 308. It's so long and skinny, it doesn't even look like it's 30 caliber. But it is as well, and that's I think a 210 grain burger. So as you stretch those things out, you increase BC. Now this brings us to what exactly makes ballistics coefficient. You know, it's a mathematical number. They do some fancy hocus pocus things, but here's what they have to consider. The caliber of the bullet and the weight of the bullet and then the shape of the bullet. Those are the three things that make up the ballistics coefficient. But there is pretty much the explanation of the difference visually between a high BC bullet and a standard not so high BC bullet. Now, if I were to drag, let's say a round nose or a flat nose bullet in here, that would even be shorter and have more drag. So that would have a lower BC. So what does it matter about this BC bullet? How does that BC contribute to higher energy or reaching further down range? Well, once again, consider when you turn that bullet loose, it leaves that muzzle. It is in the air on its own, living off of its stored energy, kinetic energy. That's energy in motion. Well, the drag is only going to slow that down. So let's say we take a 150 grain 308 caliber bullet and we'll give it a BC about four Five. So 0.45 would be the BC rating, and we'll shoot it at 3,000 feet per second. So if we launch that bullet, it's heading down range, and if it flies for two seconds, it will go about 1,200 yards on Earth in the atmosphere. Shoot it in outer space, and it's going to go 2,000 yards because there's no drag. You're in a vacuum. So the bullet's going 3,000 feet per second when it leaves the muzzle, and it's still going 3,000 feet per second when it's way down range. It just keeps flying. So there's a huge advantage. So you've got air slowing your bullet down. You've got drag gravity, of course, pulling it all the time. And that's why you end up hitting the ground out there underneath your target instead of the target. So that's what you have to factor in. How are you going to get the bullet way out there to that pronghorn before it hits the ground? You've got to aim over it, obviously, because it's going to drop. 
But if you can reduce the air drag on that bullet, it's going to be farther downrange before it drops too far. And more important than that even is the wind deflection. Because if you've got a bullet that's in the air for too long, the wind has got a lot of time to work on it and the deflection increases. So the wind deflection is a whole other topic that's a little bit difficult to understand. We'll get into that one of these days. But all those things work against a shorter, stodgier bullet. That's why everyone's crazy about these high BC bullets now. All the kids are shooting long range and they like this sniping stuff at targets way out there at 1,000, even 2,500 yards. And it's crazy where they can reach. But to do it, they really have to maximize ballistics coefficient. Now, there's something about BC that's a little bit complicated. You may have seen numbers like G1 BC and G7 BC. What is that all about? Ballistics coefficients are measured against a standard. So back in the day, and we're talking 120 years ago or more, they came up with what then was your standard bullet, which had an ogive, and that's the curve on the nose of the bullet, about two calibers. Makes for a fairly short, stumpy, round-nosed bullet, about like pistol bullets today. Not a real high BC, but that was the standard. And then they measured what it would do for drag downrange, and then they could compare other bullet shapes and weights against that. And that was kind of their standard launching point. And that was called a G1. At any rate, that's your G1 ballistic. Well, it works fine for kind of your standard bullet. The comparisons are valid. You've got a flat base. You've got a reasonable ogive, but not a real sleek one. Man, once you change things up to this modern stuff, you, you've got to have a different base bullet from which to compare or the numbers get skewed. So this one requires what's known as a G7 platform for your comparisons. And that's why you have G7s and G1s. And it gets confusing because the differences in the numbers are significant. It's almost double when you jump from your numbers in a BC on a G1 to the, the seven. You, you cut it back almost in half on the sevens and you look at it and you go, what? So it, it's really tough for writers and anybody communicating about BC to someone who doesn't understand all of this stuff because you get used to seeing, wow, a high BC bullet has like 0.6 or 0.650 or sometimes even 0.7 something. Wow, that's great. Those are G1 numbers. You translate that into a G7 and they're down around three, five or four something. And you think, well, that sucks. That's a low BC. What well, really isn't because it's just a more accurate comparison. So if you really want to get into BCs, you can study that stuff. Out to a thousand yards, I have found that the difference in the actual BC of the bullet, whether it's done with a G1 or a G7, isn't that much. Um, but when you get beyond 800, a thousand yards, it starts to add up because there's a slight difference. And the other thing to know about BC is that it are not consistent. If the bullet on the box says its BC is 0.629, it might not be exactly that in your rifle because your rifling might rough it up a little bit and that creates more drag. And when the bullet comes out, it might not be perfectly stabilized at first, kind of like a top. When you first start it, it wobbles a little bit until it settles down and then it's perfectly spinning. Same thing with a bullet. It comes out doing something called yaw where the nose is kind of going around like this until it finally stabilizes. So it can get pretty far down range and with that big yaw going like that, the air is hitting more of the side of the bullet as it progresses. So that reduces a BC for a while. And also velocity changes BC. The higher the velocity, generally the higher the BC, but when it starts to slow down, suddenly the BC slows down. It's weird stuff, but it's important to know if you're a long range precision shooter, but for a hunter, you really don't have to fool with it. What I have found is that if you use your BC numbers and you put those into a calculator and you calculate your drops and drifts, you go out shooting with that and you're generally right on out to 600 yards, sometimes as much as a thousand yards. So for hunters staying inside of 500 yards for some responsible range, works pretty darn well. Let me answer this phone and I'll get right back. Well, 
Sorry about that, everybody. It was my friend Greg calling about elk hunting this fall. He's going to put in for some tags and wanted to know I wanted to go along. <laughs> of course, I want to go along if he can get me a tag. Any rate, um, back to our BC. Something you can do to determine your real BC is to shoot it and figure it out. There are ways to do this, and I can't get into too much of it now, but what it amounts to is that you get your ballistic calculator and your bullet BC and your known muzzle velocity by chronographing your shots, and you put all that data in and you get your numbers and your drop charts, and it'll say, all right, this bullet should drop X inches at 500 yards or 400 yards. You go out and shoot that on the target and then you measure the difference between what it projected you would do and you actually do. So if it says your bullet's going to drop this far and it only drops this far, you actually have a higher effective BC in that bullet than it said you were gonna have. If it drops lower, then you've got a lower BC. And there are some calculators that will tell you exactly how that works out. So you can test that stuff. So do a little more studying. As you can tell, this gets a little bit complicated, but once you get into it, it's really not that bad. And once you've got it figured out, it's really handy to know your BCs because that is what's going to tell you how far you can shoot precisely and accurately. And with a, a laser rangefinder matched up with known trajectory curves, that's what enables us to put our bullets on target at these crazy distances. So if you like ringing steel, high BC bullets are your baby. But if you hunt, and you sometimes take 300 to 400, even 500 yard shots, especially in the wind, you can really, really get an advantage with a high BC bullet. So keep your eyes open and pay attention. We're learning things. As further we go, the more we learn and the better we become. Now, as an example of how BC can work to our advantage, we're gonna consider some easy trajectory tables. So you can watch along on the screen. What I'm gonna do is compare a couple of 150 grain bullets in a 308. So we'll shoot them in a 308 Winchester at 3,000 feet per second. Both bullets weigh 150 grains, but one of them is a round nose with a low BC of 0.186. The other is a hollow point boat tail. So this BC is much better at 0 0.450. And notice that the SD is down and it's exactly the same. Sectional density is a cross-sectional density of a bullet depending on its weight and its diameter. So both of these are 150 grains, so they both have the same sectional density in a 308 caliber of 0.266. This is why you don't use the sectional density numbers when you're calculating your BCs. It's already rolled into the diameter of the bullet to determine the BC. Okay, so if we shoot those both with the maximum point blank range for an eight inch target, we're going to reach our maximum point blank range at only 283 yards with that round nose. That means that if you aim dead center on an eight inch target, your bullet's not going to get more than four inches above it at mid range, it's about 130 yards or so. Then it's going to start dropping and out there at 283 yards, it's four inches low and then you're out of your target zone. That's your maximum point blank range. Look at how much farther you get with that more efficient bullet. 329 yards. That's a significant advantage as far as I can tell. So now let's look at the actual drop, drift, and energy numbers. At 100 yards, three and a half inches above your line of sight, because remember, you're angling up so you can go farther down range with your maximum point blank range. But the difference between the two fractions of an inch, 3.2 is the only difference right there. Now you go to your drifts in the wind and it gets a little bit more. It's 1.7 inches on that round nose, but it's only 0.7 with the hollow point boat tail. So there's a bit of an advantage at 100 yards, but for deer, come on. If you're targeting the chest of a deer and you're going to blow an inch more, big deal. This is where BC really doesn't matter. Now you are giving up some energy, but again, 2,093 foot-pounds of energy out of that round nose is going to do just fine in putting your deer to rest. But you'll get a lot more, almost 500 foot-pounds more energy out of that sharper bullet. Now this is starting to show up down range. Let's go to 200 yards. Here we're starting to see some more differences. Look at the uh, wind deflection difference now. You got about five inches of difference on it and look what's happening to that energy. That round nose bullet is really suffering because it's wasting all of its energy, pushing air out of its way. This is the, the benefit of a BC, a higher BC. 500 yards, now you're really telling the tale. 
Look at the differences there. My goodness, the energy is down to 413 foot-pounds out of that round nose bullet. I mean, that's pathetic. It really is. And there are a lot of people who insist their round nose hits harder than a pointed bullet. I'm not sure they can prove that. I would like to believe it, but given the loss of energy, that's going to have to happen inside of 250 yards, I would think, as a maximum. But look at the wind deflection, 62 inches versus 19. This is crazy. This is what BC can do for you. So here's kind of my summation. You look at this next chart. The narrower, heavier, and sleeker the projectile, your bullet, the higher its BC is going to be. That means the more efficiently it'll fly through the air, the faster it will get there, the less it will drift in the wind, and the more energy it will retain when it gets downrange. That's why everybody's all excited about BC these days. The higher the BC, the further it's going to fly, the more punch it's going to have when it gets there. So if you're the kind of hunter who engages your targets inside of 200 yards, and especially 100 yards, you really don't have to worry about BC. Get a bullet that does the job. You're more concerned about terminal performance than you are ballistic performance, exterior ballistics of the trajectory. You really don't have to worry about trajectory. I mean, look at the buffalo hunters back in the bad old days when they were market hunting. They almost wiped out something like 40 million bison on this continent with basically bullets that were round balls almost. I mean, they were they were elongated lead slugs, but my goodness, they were just stumps. And they were only going at about 1,800 feet per second at the most. And they were reaching out there to three, four, five hundred 500 yards sometimes. I mean, there's some famous long range shots, but boy, did they have to calculate some drops and drifts. <laughs> so these days, We've got a lot sleeker bullets, and you can see it in the ammunition. This is a good old 757 Mauser. Compare it to this modern 6.5 PRC, and you can really start to see what's happening with our cartridge and bullets. We're putting longer sleeker bullets on top. They uh, stick out from the case a little bit farther. We push our shoulders back a little farther. We get rid of those blunt tips. We just get more efficient projectiles to throw down range. So if you are interested in uh, really perfecting your long reach and your precision shooting to minimize the drop and drift and retain more energy, you probably do want to pay attention to bullet BC. But if that bullet does not have the kind of construction it needs to do its job when it gets there, all that's out the window. I mean, there's no sense in reaching out and touching your target with a bullet that's not going to do its job in terminating that animal. So that's another topic for the next time, terminal performance in your bullets. You've got to tie all these things together. It's all part of being a successful and responsible hunter. I'm Ron Spomer reminding you to join this channel if you can. We'd sure appreciate having you here. And you can join us on Patreon, become a member of the Ron Spomer Outdoors Patreon community. That really helps us produce these videos and our blogs. Catch my um, partner blog on this very topic on ronspomeroutdoors.com, our website. You can take your time reading that. I've got a lot more charts showing some of the drops and drifts and the energy and that sort of thing. So you can take your time and think about it a little more. Um, and also you can find us uh, every other few days on Instagram and Facebook. So we just try to stay in touch. Drop us a line. Let us know what you'd like to hear and covered uh, next time on some more of these videos. In the meantime, you know it, hunt honest and shoot straight. Mm -hmm.